Welcome back, Storm fans. I am Brant Cook, and today we're playing Modern Living End, a deck that I despised. Duh. Duh. No longer. I'm playing the deck now. Uh, I want this to be in my circulation of decks because I'm tired of not playing it just because it's so good and it beats every deck that I like playing. It's probably the best combo deck in the modern format, and I should just get good with it. That's the actuality of it. So I've put in a ton of work over the last two weeks. I've played probably upwards of 20-ish leagues and really trying to figure out the deck, how to solve the deck, and how to make the deck even better. So I'm not an expert. I'm not claiming to be, but I have those 20 leagues under my belt now, and I've learned some things. In front of you is the deck list that I started with. I don't remember whose it was, but I just took it from MTG Goldfish. It's relatively stock. So if you're unfamiliar with the deck, the idea is that you really get to abuse all of the best Modern Horizons cards. So you have Subtlety here, you have Grief, Force of Negation. Uh, obviously, you get Shardless Agent out of Modern Horizons as well. And then, you know, Endurance, Foundation Breaker, Force of Vigor. There's just so many powerful cards that this deck has gained over the last few years. And then you play a Cascade spell like Violent Outburst or the Charlotte's Agent into one of your living ends. This list plays four. I've played lists with three, but honestly, I've been burned so many times by playing three that I just always play four now. Um, but living end exiles all cards in graveyards, all creature cards in graveyards, and then returns them to the battlefield. So it gets around things like Graph Digger's Cage, for example. Uh, but Living End, you really only cast it off Shardless Agent or Violent Outburst. You do have this Singleton Sunken Ruin, so you can suspend it the hard way, but that's not usually what this deck does. The Sunken Ruins also cast Grief or Architects of Will or even Street Raid, so there's some added utility there. I mean, it, in theory, you could cast the Ley Line to the Void, but I think you're in a bad spot if that's the case. So ideally, you Cyclers uh, like Curator of Mysteries, Waker of Waves, Striped Riverwinder, Architects of Will... If you follow this channel, you know I love cycling. I play Pauper Storm. This is definitely my jam. So, I mean, the deck is relatively simple in theory. You put grave uh, creatures into the graveyard, and then you cascade into living end. That's the overarching thesis. Uh, so, it's not that bad. So, this list plays a one of Brazen Borrower for something like a main deck Dothy Voidwalker. Subtlety also covers that. Then you have Leyline of Sanctity for discard spells and Endurance, because Endurance targets, just a heads up, it's also pretty good against Burn. Mystical Dispute for Merc Tide, Subtlety for Opposing Endurances, Creature decks, stuff like that. Leyline Endurance Split for Opposing Graveyard decks. I've tried four uh, Endurance, I've tried four Leylines. I'm not really sure how I feel about either particular split um i think they're both ultimately fine i found four endurance wasn't as impactful as i would have wanted so i have been playing a split foundation breakers just an evoke i'll uh, evoke naturalize and then obviously most people know force of vigor so this is the stock list I mean, we're now going to show what i'm playing today and that's this list in front of you it's a little bit different so two brazen borrower in the main deck i really just want to beat dothy voidwalker and by playing two in the main deck i actually got to free up some cyborg space because i'm not playing foundation breaker so by playing two borrower in the main deck able to you know create extra slots in my decks so really that's why i'm playing two here no main deck subtlety there are three in the board but one change that you'll see in the main deck here is the mana base so no fast lands. That's intentional. There's something wrong with playing fast lands, I'd like to say. But one thing that I found with this deck is there's a number of games where I lost with Blood Moon, and I decided that was something I could fix with deck construction. And with talking to other people, they were like, yeah, the cyborg hate is just so good against this deck. People board in graveyard hate, and then they attack your mana base with Blood Moon. You can beat Blood Moon. You can. I, the, even this previous list has basics in it right you have two basics this one has three so it's not that big of an improvement but here you have a pair of wooded foothills you have the scalding tarn uh you're able to just consistently find these lands and that's really the difference maker on top of that you get to play an extra Ottawara. so we're playing an extra answer to main duck dothy or any other card our opponent may have and that's pretty impactful in my experience so you're just better at beating your opponent's hate with this mana base which is why i've been playing it i've i'm usually someone that recommends playing sock list a bunch before you make your own changes and I played a lot with this deck, like I said, 20 leagues over the course of two weeks. And it's not like I was just like, oh, fast lanes are wrong, let me change this. It's I played with that, 
they're fine. Like there's something wrong with that, but they don't allow you to beat hate the best manner possible. So that's what I'm trying to solve here. And I think having the extra Ottawa really does help there. I've also played lists with four Waker of Waves, which is absolutely fine. Waker of Waves is really good because it puts two creatures to the graveyard for living end. And obviously that's really good, but the fact that it effectively cycles for two can sometimes be a little bit clunky and there's only so many main deck slots. Some people run three living end, but like I mentioned, I've been burned so many times by only having three. Like you'll draw one relatively early, you'll start cycling, you'll draw another, and then you have one living end left and that's it. And it just kind of takes away some of the play of the deck. Plus when you have four, you're able to keep sevens that have a living end in it and just pitch it to grief pretty quickly. And I've been a big fan of that. All right, so I think that covers the main deck here. The sideboard is pretty much the same, other than the fact that we get to play the subtlety in the sideboard and an extra graveyard hate spell. I've gone 4-1 in a majority of my leagues. I've yet to 2-3, I've yet to 5-0. Most of it is 4-1s. I've had a couple 3-2s here and there, but I lose the mirror match a lot, and I've decided that I'm going to try to change that a little bit with my approach. So I'm having five graveyard hate spells here. Uh, subtlety is also good in the mirror, but I just want to change sort of how I approach the matchup. Uh, I'm now going to be boarding out four force of negation and grief and then probably brazen borrower. So that's 10 slots and then bringing in subtleties, endurance, ley lines, mystical disputes, and then finding a way to bring in ley line to sanctity as well. I found that in the mirror match, ultimately it comes down to, does your opponent have ley line of the void, which is why I wanted two of them to begin with. And then it becomes about endurance. And subtlety is really only there to win the endurance wars. Well, if that's the case, why don't I board in ley line of sanctity? Some people leave in grief in the mirror anyway, so it shuts off grief and endurance. I think that's worthwhile. So I have 13 cards coming in. I know 10 cards I want to take out. After that, I think it's uh, sort of a guessing game. Probably at least one living end and maybe a couple architects or maybe a shard list. Who knows? But that's my deck tech. Um... I'm sure there's some diehard living end players out there that are like, Bryant, you've misbuilt the deck. Here's why, whatever. Hey, we all have our own experiences. I'm sure your list works for you, but this is what's been working for me. I did originally pay for two cyborg guides from relatively big names in the community, and I was not super impressed, if I'm being completely honest. Uh, one of the cyborg guides regularly suggested boarding up to 61 and sometimes even 62. Another of them just played some weird choices and I wasn't really a fan of that because I think like most people have the correct cards in their deck. It's just like the numbers and rearranging them. Like none of the cards I've added are revolutionary to this deck. I'm just changing numbers here and there and adjusting the mana base. But some people play some pretty wonky stuff and I paid for one of those lists and didn't like their wonky cards. So sometimes you buy a cyborg guide, it's not good. It's not the end of the world. But I've received cyborging instructions from some people that are better than me, at least with this archetype. And I have a, I, at least a decent idea of what I'm doing. So, whew, all right. Deck Tech finally over, I promise. Thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. Suggestions down below. Let's hop, <laughs> let's hop on in to match number one. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. You can also show your support by becoming a member of this channel. You get sweet perks such as badges, emotes, early access to videos, exclusive members only content, and access to our members discord section. As you increase the tiers, there are other rewards such as shop discounts, cyborg guides, and even free donation decks. Click the join button down below to find out more. We also have other ways you can support us like theepicsworm.com slash shop or submitting a donation deck via theepicsworm.com slash donation decks. That's enough for now. Let's play some magic. Welcome to the first match. We're on the draw and I will keep. Double Waker of Waves tends to be pretty good. I do only play three, but it's mostly just because you don't really want to open multiples. This hand has the initial cycler off the Curator of Mystery, so I think that it's fine. I'm going to choose to play the, the Wooded Foothills first here. Just in case our opponent is on modern death and taxes, I can fetch for a second land immediately in the face of uh, the Arbiter. Obviously, drawing the Violent Outburst was good. Let's go fetch the Steam Vents, and then we'll cycle the Curator. And I picked up Steam Vents here because I have Wooded Foothills for the Basic Forest, and I already had an Island. Okay. Force Negation is a good one. This deck's just so powerful. 
and they're passing. What are you up to? Field of Ruin. Okay, so we only have one other red source in the deck. We do only play the two steam vents. Ranger Captain. That's fine. We'll grab a forest. Actually, I shouldn't have done that because of the Field of Ruin. That was a play mistake. Waker. Take the Grief. I don't really need the Ottawara. So now they can search out. Tommy of the False Hope. Okay. It's a weird one. Draw. The Misty was not bad. We're going to just pass here. Another Field of Ruin. Okay. They're attacking with the Ranger Captain. We'll go to 13. Martyr of Sands. Sure. On their end step, let's Waker of Waves. Whoops. Tap for the wrong colors. Waker. Take the Architects. Draw. I'm going to Grief. All right, Grief has resolved. Evoke Trigger and the ability. Pair of Elish Norns. We'll take the Abiding Grace, I guess. Play the Island. Pass the turn. They're trying to hit land number five for the Elish Norn. It's Hawk time. They've grabbed their Hawks. They have not revealed if they've... Hold on. Wait, I know their entire hand. They don't have a land. So I'm pretty free here to Petty Theft the Ranger. Okay, and we'll take one. All right, so we are not in their end step. I'm going to cycle the Architects. We're at 12 life. Draw another land. Okay. They have to go to discard. We'll draw another Violent Outburst. Okay. They discarded an Elish Norn. So maybe that was slightly good for them. I don't know how them arriving at the same time works. I think maybe I don't get my triggers. They sacrifice the Martyr of Sands. They're going to gain a bunch of life here. All right. So they found a fifth land, but it's a tap land. And we're going to respond to the Ranger Captain. And we will Violent Outburst. Cast a Living End. And I do not get my triggers. So good to know that's how that works. I haven't actually faced Elshnorn yet. Um, yep, that happens. I do know that they're sitting on a Solitude. They picked up a giant killer. Okay. I wish I had another Brazen Borrower right now. The Solitude is going to remove both of my Waker of Waves. Maybe I just played this game wrong. Okay. They go to clean up. Discards the Martyr. Another Grief. Let's swing, I guess. So they're going to choose to double block the Grief and then Solitude my two Wakers. Okay. I, I should have changed the order on those. That's a mistake. I was just so in my head about the Solitude. Damn. I miss playing this game a lot. Okay, well, they used the Martyr anyway. Maybe their plan is to hard cast the Solitude next turn. All right, we'll pass. So Solitude is entering. Sure. They're going to do one Waker and the Curator of Mysteries. We'll pass. A third Field of Ruin. We'll take five. We go to 17. They use the Mistvale Plains on Squadron Hawk. That's a cute interaction. I like that. And that's a Hawk. Definitely not a very good Force of Negation matchup. Those will be cards that I board out very quickly. Play the Brazen Borrower. Draw. Breeding Pool. Not ideal. Swing, swing. No need to attack with the Architects. And we'll pass. Amiria. Okay. Going after my red sources. They'll swing for three. We'll go to 14. And they did not replay a Squadron Hawk here, which is kind of interesting. Another Curator. Attack for 10. All right, so that was their plan. We can hard cast the Force of Negation here. We did know that they had that in hand. They're at 28, and we'll pass. Ghost Quarter. Yep, so my red spells have been shut off, but I don't think we're actually in a point in the game where I'm interested in uh, like casting this Violent Upper, so that's fine. I might as well go get the other Breeding Pool. And they attack. We'll go to 10. 
We're not out of this yet. Found me a false hope, sure. Sunken ruin, so I can hard cast grief now. Maybe I should have held this because I wanted to play curator this turn. Now I feel like I'm forced to play the grief. Yeah, I should have held the sunken ruins. That was a mistake on my part. Back for 10 again, they use the Kami. Okay. They put a hawk back in their deck. And there's another squadron hawk. They choose not to attack with the Elshnorn, so that's good. Okay. Shardless Agent. Swing with these two again. They'll chump and take three down to 25. Hardcast Curator of Mysteries. They use the Misfail Plants on Squadron Hawk. Opponent's down to 16 minutes. I mean, so are we, but I feel like we're very much in this. Skyclave triggers twice here. That is rough for us. Okay. Yep. We have one out of Wara in our deck to bounce this. That would give us a pair of 4-4s, four but even that's not incredible. Okay. And now we'll take the hit down to 7. Once I felt like I was getting ahead, maybe they were just sitting on the Skyclave. Take a draw. There's the Atawara. Okay. Send. And pass. So I can use the Atawara on the Skyclave, but I want to use it at the right moment. The Raven Inspector, that gets them two clues. Miss Vale on the Squadron Hawk, sure thing. Yep. wonder if I should... If I block here and then bounce the Ranger Captain, I can try to Living End again. And then Living End would give me two 4-4s. Four they would get back a Solitude. Maybe that's just better. All right, on their end step, let's bounce the Ranger Captain. Sure. Come on, Cyclers. No such luck. Okay. Why didn't I attack? Why didn't I attack? Ah. Oh. I'm so bad. That That is the answer. Okay, so this isn't perfect, but I do get to remove the Elishnorn and then discard the one in their hand. Okay. They get a Walking Ballista. I'm at 7. That's not good. They exile my Architects, so I go up to 10. I guess they're drawing into some Inspectors. Grief. Oh, I get an 8-8. Eight, eight. That's funny. Um, geez. Take the march, I guess. Maybe I was supposed to take the Elishorn. I have four, so I'm playing this so poorly. <sighs> Nervous about time and the fact that I'm losing this game. Losing sight. I've promised you I've played this deck a bunch, but I don't have a whole lot of experience against Mono White Control or whatever this is. That's a blister for four. Okay. They kill my grief. Something good, please. Or cast the Architects, target ourselves, and let's attack for eight. I thought we were getting a pair of four fours off that, by the way. I did not realize that we would have gotten one giant eight eight. They play an Elshnorn. Block the Walker. Inspector, sure thing. Quickly, I'm trying to also play fast now because I think that this match might come down to timeout. Cycle this, I can't hard cast it. Swing, swing. All right, so they've used their Kami. Now they're sacrificing a clue to draw a card. Ghost quarter number three. They use a clue. Ranger captain, sure thing. Finds another Martyr of Sands. Block the Martyr. I'm going to go to two. I'm probably not winning this anyway, so now I just need them to take more actions. They play another Martyr, sure. Make double black. Hardcast Street Wraith. Pass the turn. We're up about a minute on them at the moment. They play another inspector. And they pass. Can't use that. We're going to pass. Okay, so Emiria the Sky Ruin is now online. They have six planes plus the Miss Veil planes, which is seven. They brought back Solitude. Like, they've already won this game. At this point, we are playing for them to time out at ten minutes. Block the Ranger Captain. Raven Inspector, sure thing. Borrower. They're going to bring back the Ranger Captain. Nine minutes on their clock. Nine and a half minutes. Okay, before damage. We'll Petty Theft the Elshnorn. 
and then cast the brazen borrower they play another sure thing we will play another sweet wraith pass the turn double solitude this is not how i imagine this league going yep no blocks all right game one is finally over they're at eight and a half minutes versus our 11 and a half minutes about a three minute difference okay so we need to get these force negations out of the deck i'm interested in subtleties those make a lot of sense to me you could argue endurance is good here as well and i believe you i also think we want force of vigor for rest in peace almost all of their deck is creatures so i don't know how good grief actually is here i think i'm going to submit this I prefer Architects just because they pitched a subtlety and while they allow you to smooth out your draws. So if I needed to, I could quickly cycle into a fast uh, cascade into a win. Game two, we're on the play. Keep. Play out an Atawara pass. I want to protect my red sources with the Scalding Turn, so I'm going to hold those back. Turn one planes. Inspector. Cycle. We draw land number two. That's beautiful. Okay, Brazen Borrower. That's a good one. Land two. Unlicensed Hearse. Okay. So they're swinging for one. Grab the Breeding Pool. Ouch. Let's bounce that Hearse. Sure. Play the Foothills. We'll pass. I think we're just on like the Hardcast Beatdown Plan at the moment. Sure. They swing. We'll fetch for probably the basic. I just don't want to take too much self-inflicted damage. Cast the Endurance. Target me. We'll go to blocks, get rid of this Thraven Inspector. They play Miss Veil Planes. Okay. Waker of Waves. Hard cast the Curator. Smash. Opponents at 17. Field of Ruin. They drew a card using the clue. Another Endurance. It's not bad. Swing, swing. Seven coming in. They play planes. I'm willing to bet that they have a subtlety that they have in hand. I'll fetch. Grab a steam vents. Use this for a colorless. Let's waker of waves. Don't need this. We'll put it on the bottom. There's the sub. Or cast the brazen borrower. So we have lethal on board. Let's swing. Did I say subtlety? I meant hard cast solitude. And we will hard cast subtlety. Put that on top of your deck. All right, so we won that one pretty quickly. Now we're going to game three. Nice unlicensed curse. Resubmit. One land is not ideal. I think I'm going to keep it anyway. Gotta have faith that I'll draw land number two. Temple Garden. So we're seeing a splash for the first time. Martyr of Sands. That was not the land I was looking for. Ouch. Pass. Another Martyr. No land two? Ouch, I go to 17. No second land. All right, Cycle Riverwinder. Not good. Draw. There's our land. All right, we'll pass. They're bringing the pain. We'll go to 15. They're passing. Grab the forest. I'm just trying to save on some life points here. Waker of Waves. Guess I'll take Endurance. I don't really need another Living End. Draw. And now I'm getting punished for not grabbing the uh, Breeding Pool here. Cycle Riverwinder. Damn. Okay. Let's get rid of... Agent. They found land number two. Yeah, me not grabbing a Breeding Pool is just dumb. The two life points didn't matter as much as cycling into our land. Interesting. No turn two play. I'll go to 10. In their upkeep, let's... Violent Outburst. Hollowed Moonlight. Okay. I don't have to cast the Living End, by the way. So I'm just going to choose to not do it. That was the wrong time to play Hollowed Moonlight. We go to 8. And now we can Violent Outburst. Actually, I should Shardless Agent. Might as well get the body. They pitch a uh, Solitude, and I can Endurance them before this happens, so that way they won't get the Solitude back. Okay, hold Control. Cast this. 
With it on the stack, I'm going to Endurance, target them, Living End, Endurance them. Look at us now. Didn't even need to time them out. We got there. All right. We are 1-0. That was sweet. All right, match number two coming up. Looking to make playing your favorite combo deck much easier? Look no further than the Epic Storm Mini Token Combo Pack, which is available at theepicstorm.com slash shop for $14.99. This combo token pack comes with 84 double-sided tokens. That includes our classic Storm and Mana tokens, as well as fan favorites such as Goblins, Squirrels, and Slime Time Live. But that's not all. We've expanded this token pack to cover a variety of formats with new tokens. Stop on by the epicstorm.com slash shop and make an easy decision to elevate your combo game. All right, round two, we are going to keep this. We have turn one grief pitching our fourth living end. We have a cascade card. I just need to draw lands. We have two cyclers on the first turn for that as well. Misty rainforest. Let's start on grief. Let's get some information about what they're playing. Okay, Murktide. We'll take the counter spell. Pass the turn. Oh, okay. It is not, is it? On their end step, we'll cycle the Riverwinder. There's land two, that's good. And land three, love it. We'll pass. They play a Delta. We'll go to their end step and fetch. I am going to just fetch for shocks here. Ouch. Let's waker. Want the force negation. Ouch. In their upkeep. Let's violent outburst holding control. Cascade. So this is on the stack. Why didn't it hold control for me? I wanted to cycle with this on the stack, but like it just passed priority. I'm lucky that our opponent fetched here. Okay. Living end on the stack. We know that they have Archmage's Charm and Murktide Regent. We will force of negation the charm, and then they can get blown out. GG. Okay, so some sort of weird. It could be shadow, I guess. Definitely want mystical disputes. Probably want some subs. Do we? Actually, it might just be right to not have subs in your deck. Also, like just cut borrowers versus a deck like this, and rely on our lands being the answers because we do have three answer lands. All right, I'll leave one borrower and we'll board out one Riverwinder. Let's do this. Game two. Keep, 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 keep. Blue to Delta. Okay. So it is more likely to be Shadow. If there is a game three, I will consider boarding in Leyland Sanctities. Agent down. Draw for turn. Not the one we wanted. All right. They play land two and they're just passing. Fetch, grab a steam vents, cycle, curator's not bad. Would love a grief. Grief and land three. They cycle a street rate, so they're definitely on shadow. Okay. Five cards in their hand. Let's use the waker. Grief and land three. I think I want the grief more than I want the land. We have other lands in our dock. Cycle a curator. That does not cast those. All right, I'm going to play it out just because if I draw one next turn, I can Mystical Dispute back up. A green source, that is. What is going on here? Is this a Murktide? Okay, sure. Green source. Nope. All right, I'm going to Living End, or Grief pitching the Living End now. Just in case they wanted to fight over this, I have the extra resources. A lot of counters, holy moly. We're at 10. I think it's actually right to take the shadow here to slow them down. We'll pass. Dealer, can I have a green source? They drew another shadow. So I could dispute here because if they pay or counter back, I have a window. Yeah. All right, dispute. Come on, green source, pretty please. So I know that they have counter spell double drown in the lock. Let's uh, try to cast some spells. Grab the basic. Violent Outburst. Living End. Force it. And now I'm going to guess that they're going to counterspell back. And they do. So we know that they have a Drown and Lock in hand. 
And now we can untap and just slam our last Cascade spell. We go to eight, draw, Sunken Ruins, Violent Outburst. Who would have thought that I'd be fighting this hard to put a pair of Death Shadows in play? All right. And then we'll Architects them as well. Give them an island. Grief, take the Drown in the Lock. And then we'll pass. So they're drawing island and have Counterspell in hand. And then Misty's their third card down. I accidentally just closed that. I'm at eight life and they're at nine. Draw. The Sage you. So let's just talk this through. If hypothetically, let's say I swing out, they block a waker, they block architects and take lethal. I believe that's their only move. So once again, they block waker, they block architects, they take these. That is nine, so swing. They're drawing the watery grave, and that is lethal. Boom, 2-0. With Card Hoarder, renting your favorite combo deck has never been easier. There isn't a more affordable solution for Magic Online. Want to play the deck in this video? Check out the pinned comment below to easily rent the deck from Card Hoarder. Did you know you can rent the Epic Storm from Card Hoarder for as little as 7 tickets a week? We've made it simple to do so by including a button to rent the entire deck at theepicstorm.com slash decklist. On the play, it's the third match, keep. Yeah, I mean, we only have one cycler here. It's not like a snap keep, but I do think it's a keep. Misty passed the turn. Scalding Tarn. Okay. Fetch. Grab a Steam Vents. And we'll cycle. Looking for more creatures. There we go. Love it. Pass the turn. They use Scalding Tarn and they grab a Breeding Pool. Are we playing the Mirror? No, I'm so bad at the mirror. I talked about this in the deck tech. Okay. We'll fetch. Grab a forest. And then let's wake her. Take the Ottawara. Okay. Let's just jam, I guess. We're going to hold priority on this living end. And then cycle. They cycle a curator. And another curator. Wow, that's a lot of flying damage. Yeah, and I feel like I'm already losing this. I was not expecting them to be sitting on double flyer. So they'll attack for nine in the air, and I'll go to five. And even if I out of war one of them, they have lethal on the following turn. Yep. I'm at five. Grief pitching Street Wraith. Sure. They take an agent. And then they had lethal. Why would they do this? <laughs> uh, I think they actually just helped me. Yeah, no fights here. They leave me with another agent. Okay. Violent Outburst. We have to pass. I think I'm going to Ottawa or the Grief. Oh. I guess I milled my island. I can't block. I guess I should have just shocked an Ottawa. I don't know. Is this a hard cast? Creator number four. Okay. So the only way when this game is if my... End step outburst into untap bounce your threat swing works. Living end. Target me. Architects. That is not what the doctor ordered. I was really hoping for like maybe another violent outburst just for the pump mode. Okay. So they should block Riverwinder with Street Wraith Wakers and then bounce lose lose. And I just die. But we'll see what the opponent does. I kind of just need them to mess up. And they have uh, taunted me in chat. What a nice person. Swing. So they're willing to take six here. Okay. Yeah, there's nothing I can do. All right, game two. If we had like a flyer on top of our deck, I could cycle into the flyer and then living end again. But we don't. So it's kind of just like a moot point. So, I want to bring in my entire sideboard minus the Force of Vigors. That is ideally what I can do here. And then I don't love Grief in the matchup. And I don't think Force of Negation is particularly good. I don't love Brazen Borrower. That's 63. So, it's everything but the Ley Lines. I think that in the mirror, you can board down on Living Ends and one Charlotte's Agent. Because, like, game one, you need to cast them. In the post board games, 
casting your living ends is very different. So you don't actually want to draw them, and you don't want as many Cascade cards. Yes, I'd like to be on the play. This is fine. Point it with a mulligan to four. Now to three. There is hard mulling for ley line. They have mulligan to one. Uh, I am tempted to say something in chat, but I'm not going to. Instead, we'll just go to game three. We'll be the, the bigger person. So they have shown us that they have ley lines in their deck. So I kind of want Brazen Borrower if that's the case. And... We'll board out Architects, hit Submit. Game three, sure. Our opponent has Mulligan to five. Like, I just don't believe you're supposed to hard Mulligan to one of your two Ley Line of the Voids. Hot take. Okay. Endurance me now. Draw for turn, we draw an Agent. Play the Misty and pass. They have a Breeding Pool. They cycle on Architects, sure. They have missed their second land drop. We'll fetch. Ouch. Cycle Riverwinder. Land three is good. Subtlety two. We are in a very commanding position here. Force of Vigor pitching outburst. Yeah, you got it. They have three cards in hand. They cycle a Riverwinder. Okay. They have found land number two. Grief pitching living end. We're going to put Grief probably on the bottom of their deck. I mean, they get to choose, but I'm, what I'm saying here is I'm willing to bet that they're putting it on the bottom. And they have one card in hand. We'll go to 13. Cycle the Curator. Mm, didn't want to draw a land. Cycle Street Wraith. Need another Cycler here. Unfortunately, we're flooding out a little. All right, I'm going to play the Shardless Agent here. So you could wait until their upkeep to do it. But I don't think that actually rewards you, because like if they have a Waker in their hand, you get punished. Cast the Living End. Okay, so something I could do is I could just put the Shardless Agent back on top. But I don't think I actually want to do that. And they've conceded, so we have won the match. We are 3-0. Two more matches left to go. Let's see if we can break the curse. If you're still watching, make sure to give this video a like, comment, and subscribe. While you're near the description, here's a reminder to use our affiliate links if you're going to make a purchase from Amazon, Card Hoarder, or TCG Player. Just above those affiliate links, you'll find our social channels. Make sure to join those to connect with us. Okay, the fourth match, we're on the play. Double Living End, I think I'll pass on. Keep, will bottom one Living End. I think I'm going to hold on to the Grief. I need to make sure I hit my line drops this game, so I'm going to choose to wait a little bit, just see if I draw maybe like a spare living end or something. I guess like I could have bottomed the outburst. That was another option. We will cycle. Come on, land number two. Pretty please. A. Hey. All right. Well, now I feel pretty comfortable griefing. All right. Grief triggers. Merfolk. What to do? What to do? Take the spreading seas. Pass the turn. They play island into master. Grab a breeding pool. And then we'll wake her waves. Looking for that third land. We did not find it. I'm going to purposely take the living end here, putting the grief in the graveyard. In case I spike land three, we can double grief them. Draw. The waiting's killing me. All right, Cycle Street Wreath, come on, Doc. No such luck. Damn. All right, we missed a window there. They play Mutavolt, and I'll go to 13. That was a really good spot for us to win the game. We just missed it. Okay. Pretty please? Nope, Deck hates me. Pass the turn. So they get to draw a card here, and we'll take six down to seven. So they're representing lethal on the following turn. Draw. Way too late. And they probably have uh, a counter spell by now. Draw this agent. Cast living end. You have to have a counter spell. Come on. Yeah. All right. Sure. Brutal. So Merfolk, we want subtleties. We want disputes. I've done Force of Vigor before. It's fine. Third of the Force of Negations, 63. I think I'm going to do no Force of Vigors and just rely on my Borrowers plus Ottawaras. Word out one Riverwinder. 
Let's try that again. Pass on double living end. This is like the same thing that happened last game. Holy moly. All right. Keep. Get rid of living end. Island pass. Full cycle. We have found land too. That's a good sign. Ouch. Pass. Vial goes up to one counter. Relic. It's a little bit annoying. Let's waker. I don't need another steam vent, so I'm going to take this tree wraith. Draw. So I can charge this agent here and try to get them to crack the relic. I think that's probably just the move. Living end. They force it pitching subtlety. Okay. They have three in hand. Vile is on two now. Remove a land. They have three cards. Another subtlety. If there is a game three, I think I'm going to board in Force of Vigor. Bang. Cycle is free rate to see if I can hit land force for these hard cast subtleties, and I do. Pass. Ether Vial. X Catcher. Lovely. Muta Vault may have two cards in hand. They choose to not attack, which means they don't have a Lord. Play the subtlety. We're definitely losing the race at the moment. Attacking with the Shardless Agent is silly when they have a 3-3 Muta Vault, so we're only going to send the subtlety here. Alright, they're at 15, and I think we're just going to play the Curator of Mysteries. They use Relic in response. Pass, they have three in hand. Vial on two. They have a Master of the Pearl Trident. So now their Muta Vaults are four fours. And they have Island Walk. So they are representing lethal. Six damage coming in. No blocking. And next turn they have attack with Mutavolt as well. They're showing us force and negation mana here. It's worth noting that. Fetch. And cycle. I think our best odds are somehow resolving a living end. Okay, so we'll draw. Cycle again. That can go on the bottom. Because it takes up time on our turn. Borrower's not bad. We're at four now, though. Hmm. Not really sure what the move is. So if we attack with the Curator, they go to 11. And there's still no way that I win on the following turn. I think I'm supposed to just pass. Because if they're smart, they activate all of these, and then I'm just blown out. I also need our opponent to up the Vial to 3 for no reason. That's like one of the only ways I win this. They did not. Okay, so I'm just dead in the water. Sure. They animate a Mutavolt. Yeah, I really wish they ticked up that vial. Petty Theft the Master. Hope that for some reason they don't vial it back in. And our opponent has a pulse. Unfortunate. Okay, so we've lost this one. We will not break the curse. Let's go try to win match number five. Want early access to articles at theepicstorm.com? Become a member of our patron to get articles seven days early on top of other sweet benefits and help us pay our website team. You can sign up at patreon.com slash theepicstorm. The fifth and final match, our opponent has started off by revealing a Karuga. Once again, double living end. Sometimes that happens when you play four. Like, it's just part of the beast. We're going to keep this in bottom land number three. One swept teeth, sure thing. We draw another land. Pass. I'm not really sure what our opponent's doing, if I'm being completely honest. Like, I don't know what the modern Kruger deck looks like. Could just be like rhinos, I guess. Is it just rhinos? Cycle a river winder. Okay, we'll pass. Godless shrine, okay. Temple garden. The fairy time raveler. Now I feel foolish for not playing the Grief. Um, Cycle of Street Wraith. I don't know why this wasn't on my mind. Cycle of Street Wraith. That's a lot of lands. Yep. We have two Ottawaras and two Brazen Borrowers to get us out of this situation. Yeah, and I mean, in hindsight, if I would have thought of Teferi, I would have played the Grief the previous turn, but I'm a dummy. Grab the Forest. Right on time, Violent Outburst will pass. Fable of the Mirror Breaker. Okay. They play a land. Well, there's Ottawara. That's not bad. Play the Sunken Runes and pass. 
I guess we're hoping to draw a black card now. They discard Cavernous Souls and Breeding Pool. They swing, they create a treasure. What is going on here? Five mana for a Hardcast Fury. Okay. On the run step, we will bounce the Teferi. Come on, deck give me a black card, please. At 11. This Fury represents lethal with the, uh, I guess this thing has summoning sickness. I could be really greedy and try to grief block and then violent outburst. It's just like right now we've drawn so many lands and I don't even know how good this living end actually is. We'll make black black. Hardcast grief. This is the point where they show me two copies of Teferi. Triggers. They solitude my grief. Okay. And they have nothing. So now it's worth noting that if I do living end, they will get back a solitude. So they're attacking for eight. Ouch. They play flooded strand. We knew about that. Another fable. Ah, oh, that's brutal. Had them at a point where their hand didn't do anything. And we draw another land. Ah, oh, geez. We'll pass. In their upkeep, we can consider... Um, yeah, I think we want to do it before they draw off the fable. Would have loved to have drawn some creatures this game too. Like all three of these creatures were in our opening hand and we've just drawn mono lands. Solitude comes back, they'll exile a street wraith and we have these creatures. They discard island caverns, so they still have Misty and two unknowns in hand. So they can put Kruga to hand and cast it right now and draw a card. Omnath. And they can still put Kruga into hand and then cast it. Elish Norn. Okay, their deck is making more sense now. And they do put Kruga to hand. Draw. It is, in fact, a creature. So we will attack them with Street Wraith. They can't block because they control a Swamp. And then on their turn, the Fable will transform. So if they play Kruga right now, they're going to draw a lot of cards. So the question is, do I let them do that? They're going to go to combat. I'll attempt to block. They play a land, so they'll gain some life. All right, so Kruger will resolve. And then I think we're going to respond to this trigger. We'll start off by fetching. We really want to draw into running creatures here. Cycle the architects. Ah, uh, so brutal. Violent outburst. Like, I guess I could have cast this and then cycled my own fault okay that's the living end target myself okay all right they've got me we can go to the next one that was rough i think that entire game came down to me not griefing on turn two we definitely want subtleties here i think we also want disputes 65 cards. I'm going to go against myself here and board out the fourth living end. I always get burned whenever I do it, but I don't want to board out Force Indigation versus the Teferi deck, even though their deck is mostly creatures. I mean, another thing I could do is just board out Grief, since their deck is mostly creatures, and then bring back in the living end and board out like one Architects. But also just like board in Endurance. Surprise kill some planeswalkers that way. Or clear the graveyard so that way I can live in multiple times. I think I'm down for this. Okay. Sure. Cycle Street Wraith. Ouch. Pass. Misty. Cycle the Riverwinder. There's a red source. Agent. I think my best hit off this waker is probably subtlety to stop an opposing endurance. Okay. We'll fetch. Ouch. Blue, blue, and waker of waves. Borrower's not bad. I don't think I need another cascade effect. Endurance. We'll pass. In their upkeep, let's outburst. But living in on the stack, do you have an endurance? Can't force a negation here. 
It looks like it's going to resolve. Sweet. They have land three. The fairy bounces the waker. Yep. Fury kills my um my street rate. That's a bummer. So I have a Riverwinder versus there to fairy. Get dead. Play the sunken ruins, and I'm just going to pass. Okay, they're passing. On their end step, we'll make some blue mana. Use the waker. Just take the Besaju. Cycle the Curator of Mysteries. Another land? Okay. Now they're fetching. Is this a hardcast endurance? Well, they didn't get another green source if it wanted to be a hardcast endurance. Interesting. Swing. They're at 11. They're now at 9. Riverwinder is definitely bullying them a little bit. Fetch. I don't think I'm going to play the Endurance. I thought about it. But they're almost at the point where they just have to play, like, Solitudes to block. And why play creatures into their, their like, chump block Solitudes? They're at four. Pressure's on them now to do something meaningful. Five mana for an instep Solitude. Sure. Didn't see that coming. The Fairy. Well, I'm going to respond to this. Grab an Island. We can Petty Theft the Solitude, so that way it can't block. They are fetching in response. Sure. So they go to one life. And I'm guessing they're going to hard cast Force and Negation here. That's fine. The Fairy can happen. We can still use Ottawara underneath that. They're going to draw a card. And we will Ottawara the Solitude. Untap and attack. Game three coming up. So I think I had a change of opinion in the middle of that game. I think I do like Grief. Because this matchup isn't about big dumb beaters. Like, Waker of Waves isn't really what we want here. Like, the fact that Striped Riverwinder has Hexproof is so valuable. So I think instead you're supposed to bore out the Curator of Mysteries. That brings you to 61. And then I think that you just brought out one Living End. And we'll submit this. Okay, we've opened up a hand with only one cycler, but it is a decent hand. Misty Rainforest. Another land. Well, we're going to thin our deck before we cycle, so we'll, we'll pull out one land, increase our odds of drawing a creature slightly more. Okay. Fetch. I need to stop drawing lands. We'll grab a Steam Vents. Ouch. They're also going to fetch, apparently. And I will cycle a Striped Riverwinder. Okay, it's not a land, I suppose. They're going to ice my land. That's fine. Grief. Unfortunately, I don't have a black card at the moment. They play a tap land. They have six cards in hand. Take a draw. Another ice? Sure. Hey, and there's our black card. Let's grief them. Let's take the Fable the Mirror Breaker. Play the Misty. We'll pass. They play a Stomping Grounds. Fetch, I think we're going to grab another Steam Vents here. Living End. So that means that we have two more Living Ends in the deck because I boarded one out. Interesting. I think they might have baited me here, but I'll go for it. Actually, no, I know that they can't force a negation. Fast Living End. Grief. Take the Fury. Fury can trade with the Riverwinder, which is why I want that gone. Solitude, unfortunately, just has to jump block it, so that's the game plan. They play a land, and they're going to 13, so they're hard casting the Solitude. Oh no, they drew another Fury. That's actually bad. Uh, that's not good news. And I drew the third Living End. This always happens. Every single time I board out the fourth Living End. Oh no, we are not in a good spot. I am punished like every time. What to do? Swing, I guess. I'd rather have it off the board when they're a Kruger deck, I think. That was such a good draw for them. And we're in really big trouble after drawing multiple living ends. I know that some people play, um, what is it called? Valakut Stone Fort, Valakut Awakening to put these on the bottom, but that hasn't been a thing in a while. Am I supposed to wait until I draw three lands to cast this? That seems a little ambitious. They will hard cast Solitude. Okay. So this has lifelink, so I'm going to go to 13 and they're going to go up to 15. 
They put Kruger to hand. Cycle Riverwinder. And another. Cycle. Adawar is not super helpful right now. Play the Shardless Agent. No living ends. We'll pass. So how we win this game now is that I need to draw into the Sunken Ruins, naturally suspend, and then buy time and endurance them before it goes off. So we need a number of things to happen. Are you willing to trade here? You have a Karugan hand. That would have drawn a card. Odd. Okay. Sure. They've made four mana, and now they can play the Karugan draw too. Yep. Not looking good for the home team. Draw another agent. Uh, pretty sure I've just lost this. I guess I need to bounce the Omnath just because I need to stay alive. So I don't want to bounce Karuga because they'll keep drawing cards. So we're bouncing the Omnath and then I'll take five going down to eight. Even if I were to draw the Sunken Ruins, I don't think I can stay alive long enough at this point. That's an Omnath. Yep. I don't know why I keep doing this to myself. I know that I'm just like repeating the same thing, but I, I keep on telling myself, stop boarding out the fourth living end. And then I do it. And every time I'm punished every time. So uh, if you're thinking about playing a deck, playing this deck, don't ever board out the fourth living end. The sideboard guides you'll buy from uh, people will tell you to do it. And that's why I do it sometimes, but it's just wrong. Like every time I'm punished and it sucks. Okay, I can't win this. So unfortunately, we went three and two. I usually four one with this deck, but uh, a little bit of bad luck in that last match, in my opinion. Sometimes that happens as well. Uh, I'll be honest, I wouldn't change a single card. Uh, I really like this deck list, despite only going through two today. And uh, ooh, what's that? I've never seen this card before in my life. It's not very good, though. Okay, well, uh, thank you for watching. I do appreciate it. I really would not change anything though, so just don't be an idiot. Don't board out living ends. That's my recommendation. Uh, thanks. Have a great day and keep storming. Hey, Brand Cook here. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like and subscribe, but also follow the social media channels down below. If you want to support this content directly, I would recommend going to theepicstorm.com slash shop. And if you need a little bit of assistance with the Epic Storm to get to that next level, I would recommend going to theepicstorm.com slash tutoring. Don't worry, there's more great content coming right up.